Welcome to my son class, Mr. Dowd here. Hope everyone's having a great Friday. Last day for the weekend. Uh, I'm going to be working on my Fort Jefferson project. So we left off doing the um, lighthouse. So next one I'm going to do is the buildings in here. Alright, so there's two buildings. I'm probably just going to make one of them and just copy it and put it on the other side. Make it easier for myself. So, let's go ahead and start with a box. Let's make it, oh, it's probably about the same size as one of these lengths. So it's going to be white. Because, I mean, that is obviously a diorama of it, but it is a white building. Although in the real one, there isn't. Huh. That's funny. Alright, so never mind. I'm not going to put those in. That must have been what it was like before when it was an active base. Hmm. Okay, well. I guess I'm not going to put those buildings in. So I'm just going to start with the grass in the field then. Actually, let's put this into the right spot. It's right around here, and let's make it slightly smaller. Something like that. Alright, so I'm going to do a, another polygon shape. Polygon is going to have six sides. And let's just make it right here. So it covers the whole area. Also, it's rotated so it's it matches up with the other one. It's called. Eh, it's not right. Something like that. Let's put that right in the middle. Maybe make it a tiny bit bigger. Nope. Something like that. So we bring this and this. Let's align it. Cool. Let's make it thin. Put it to one. Ooh. Just this. Get this one down to one. And let's make it a greenish. Alright. So that's the interior. Um, you can see in the old diorama that there was um, this triangular piece out of it. So let's make another polygon. Let's make it huge. Let's make another polygon. Let's make it huge. Also. Let's line up both of these, because what I'm trying to do now is do the um, this little ring around the outside, this breakwater, I believe it's called. So let's make this a little smaller. We'll make it taller. Let's make it a hole, and now uh, let's realign these. Bring it down so it goes all the way through. And let's group that together. Yeah, I want it to be a little bit better than that because it's pretty thin in real life. Ding, ding. It's still not thin enough for me. Mm. Like that. Get like that. That looks good. Hopefully, last time to line that up. Oop. And let's group it. Cool. Now I'll make this like five or something. Make it really thin. So next class, I'll get this all shaped up so it'll be around the outside of this. All right, guys, I'll see you on Monday. Bye. Radio, making
cinnamon rolls for breakfast. Boop. Put the oven on. 375. I already broke this open. So now I'm going to remove the cinnamon rolls. There's the frosting. them frosting side up or cinnamon side up in the pan. Round pan's best but I don't have one right now so I'm using this. Which is fine. these in the oven for about, I don't know, eight minutes or so. And then when I'm done, I'm going to frost them with the frosting. When they are hot, so the frosting melts. I'm sure you guys have had these before. You can get them right in Market Basket or any type of grocery store. All right, I will see you on the other side. Okie dokie, they're done. So now I'm going to put some frosting on them. want to do it when it's hot so that it can melt. I always use something like this which I use to frost cupcakes too. This type of um, it's not a knife but it's like a spreader. I'm sure there's a technical term for it. All right so the thing about cinnamon rolls is they harden up like really bad if you don't eat them. So the best hot. And they're also probably not going to fill you up because they're not that great for you. But they're good to have as a treat once in a while. You know when they're done when it's brown on the bottom. All right, so on that note, a little more. On. Good to go. See how they're gooey and soft? That's how you want to eat them. Otherwise, they can get hard, very hard, and like really like just like spackle. You can heat them in the microwave and probably in the oven to chew, but you just have to be careful. All right, kiddos, that's it. Until next time. Hey Gators, welcome back to Language and Play. All right, so today we are going to start to develop our character profile. All right, and in our character profile, we are going to use the information that we came up with when we did our research. All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to start with my character's name, and my character's name was Vlad Tepish. Okay, and my character, the time that I'm going to use my character is when he was 31 years old. His family, okay? Um, he came from a small family. Um, he had his father. His mother didn't have much of an influence on his life. 
Um, he also had a wife and a son. Okay, so those are the characters that I'm going to be focused on. And he was in Wallachia, which is modern day Transylvania. Oh, Wallachia, Romania. His favorite food or drink for fun. And he was actually uh, diagnosed with a disease called hemophilia, where he actually needed blood transfusions. So we're going to say blood, because the legend says that Vlad Tepes Dracul is Count Dracula. All right, so that's going to be my fun little angle, where this is a real character in history, but we're going to put a little twist on it. Um, his greatest fear was his loss of power. Okay, his greatest wish for a free Wallachia. And his most important being was the Order of the Dragon. We're going to go into that with a little more detail later. All right. So what I did was I figured out all of this information from my research. So today you are going to create your character profile with all of the information from your research. Okay. All right. Gators, can't wait to see what you come up with. Have fun. Go get it. Hey, guys. We're going to finish working on that shark rock. I'm using this rock as my reference. So last time we added, or I added, the two different values of gray, the darker gray on the top, the lighter gray on the bottom. Just going to add a little more gray to that area here. All right, so now I'm going to darken inside the mouth area. And I'm not really going to worry too much about if I cover up some of those teeth that I drew on there, because I can always just paint right over the black. So I might just do it a little faster if I don't worry too much about painting over those teeth that I drew. So I'm just using straight up black. inside that mouth. All right. I'm just going to bring this down a little bit more. Also going to paint his eye black to start, but then I'm going to go in and add a little bit of gray areas and a little white highlight. If you remember when I painted that cat rock, so I did the black pupil, but then later I added that little white highlight. It just gives it a little bit of a realistic look. gray this time into the eye just kind of like a darker gray but I don't want it to be black at this point and I'm using my reference that I already this to just make sure I'm adding the details the way I want to have the details so I'll go in with a little bit of gray Something like that. And I think I'm just going to grab some more black for the center of the eye again. I'm 
and I'll just let that dry a little bit. Now I'm going to go back to the mouth area. The black paint in the mouth is almost dry, so I'm going to add some of those teeth with the white. And that paint's starting to dry up a little bit, so I actually need to just pour a little bit more of that white paint. It's going to grab some. Oops. It starts to dry up around the top of the bottle. All right. So I'm going to get those teeth nice and pointy. Sometimes that can be tricky. So I might have to go back in with some black again and like fill in the black areas around the white teeth to help make the teeth look pointier. But first I just want to add the white. Make some intimidating sharp shark teeth. Because if they look like pointy, sharp teeth, he's going to look like a scarier shark, I think. So again, I'm going to let this dry and then I'll go in with the black on the edges of the white teeth and really make them look super pointy next time. So I like how the teeth look. I'm going to let all of this paint that I added today dry and then I'll go in and fix the teeth up and we'll add a little highlight to the eye and also maybe just kind of do some shading in some areas like this shark has. All right. I'll see you next time, guys. I hope you're having fun painting rocks. Thanks for watching Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.